And there's been a little bit of discussion about critical reviews for books, um, if people should do it, how people should do it, etc. I wanted to go ahead and put my thoughts out there as well as um, towards the end I plan on reviewing one of the books that I recently read. It will kind of tie into this topic. Well, first, I wanted to just say that when I read, I read purely for fun. Um, I do not read, or the books that I'm reviewing or talking about here on BookTube are not to expand my knowledge of the world or make me a better person. I'm still in college, so I have plenty of books to read for that that are expanding my knowledge, my sign language base, and... Um, preparing me for, you know, the real world, or however you want to put it. Um, the books that I read um, in my spare time, yes, it's a book. So obviously there's a little bit of knowledge there, writing styles, um, vocabulary, different things that can come up while I'm reading a book. And of course, I feel like every book is a new adventure. So, you know, I'm going on that journey with the author, with the characters, and that is character building, and it does, you know, offer some knowledge along the way, but that's not the reason why I read. I read to get away from all of that and to just fully fall into the story and go on that adventure. So, any books that I'm reviewing on BookTube, unless I specifically state that I'm using this book for school, I'm not using this book to learn more about the world. So you won't see me reading a lot of classics. You won't see me um, reading a lot of um, memoirs, um, biographies, um, historical <laughs> books, um, anything like that. I did read one um, history book over the summer and I have already talked about that on this channel. Um, I did recently talk about um, a book that I was doing for one of my interpreting classes. Um, it's kind of a diary slash biography. Uh, so it's not that I don't read them at all. It's just that you won't normally see me on my channel talking about those types of books because that's not usually what I pick up because I'm reading that so much for school. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, so critical reviewing. When I started my booktube channel, I wasn't really sure how I was going to go about um, a rating system for books. Um, I was on Goodreads before I started my booktube channel and I was just basically going off of my feel for how I felt after I finished the book. And while that was a great rating system for me at the time, since I started BookTube and I was getting more serious about um, rating, well, reading, rating, and reviewing books, I decided to come up with a system. And I've explained my system before, but the simple explanation is, is I took the five story elements, character, setting, plot, conflict, um, purpose, resolution, outcome. So I take those five elements and I grade each of those one through five. Five being the best, one being the worst. Um, and I've gone into depth about this in a previous video, so I'm not going to do that here. Um, so you'll have to go back. Um, maybe I'll link it in the description box if I remember. But basically, I came up with a way to review books, and that's really been helpful for me. Um, I decided that if it was, let's say, a 4.3, then I could either decide to rate it a 4 or a 5. And of course, some of my ratings have been 4.3, but I've rated it a 5, and some of them have been 4.3, and I've rated it a 4. So it's not really the mathematical way of rounding up or rounding down. I just decided if it falls in between two numbers, I can decide whether it's a, you know, a 1 or a 2, or a 2 or a 3, etc. So I just wanted to say when I watch YouTubers, I love seeing books that they enjoy, specifically when they're really into a book. And if I have similar tastes with that booktuber, I might go out and pick up a book. A lot of my books on my bookshelf are not specifically recommended to me, but they've mentioned books in the past that I've either read or I've bought and then I've really liked them. And so I kind of see that we have a niche where we like reading the same type of books. So whenever they're like really psyched about a book, I'll go out and pick it up. And then from there, I can decide whether I like it or not. 
Um, so I like when people share their recommendations, but I also like when they share that they didn't like a book. They don't have to be as critical. Let's say um, they don't have to, you know, slander the author or the work or anything like that. Because I know every single author, if you're going through the process of writing a book, I'm sure it takes a lot of time for every single author. Um, some authors may work harder than others, but um, altogether, I think you know, we can all agree that it's not an easy job. It's putting yourself out there for tons of people to review and talk about. And anytime you do that, just like on booktube, we're putting ourselves out there. Um, it can be a little difficult at times. So try to keep that in mind and try to be respectful. Um, at the same time, for myself personally, I haven't really um, done any in-depth reviews on my channel yet. I do plan to start doing that um, if and when I have time. Um, but for critical reviewing, I think it's important to talk about books that you don't rate a four or a five. A lot of people have a different rating system. A lot of people think a three is horrible. A lot of people think that three is great. So I guess it just depends on the specific reviewer, booktuber, you know, whatever, um, if they, how their rating system is, and if you know their rating system, then you can kind of see, you know, if they do give books negative reviews. Now, if a reviewer, booktuber, blogger, whatever, decides not to do bad reviews on a books, that's fine with me. Um, they, I'm sure they have their reasons for not doing so, but for me personally, I think it's important to share with you guys books that I absolutely love, books that I think are good, books that I think are okay, books that are like could have used a little bit more work, and books that I consider bombing. So take it for what it's worth. Um, I do plan on trying to do more reviews on specific books. And how I'm going to do it is when I do my wrap up at the end of the month, um, which I should be filming shortly. Um, for October. After I do my wrap-up, if there's any books that you'd like to see me do a more in-depth review on, at the end of my wrap-up in the comment section, you'll just leave the title of the book that you would like me to review more in-depth. And if I get any um, comments on books um, that you'd like to see reviews on, I'll do my best to film more in-depth reviews for that book. But today, since we're talking about critical reviewing, I thought I would do my best to attempt my first critical review. This month, and it will be in my October wrap-up, so I don't plan on going too in-depth with this particular review. Um, if you would like to know more, you'll have to comment in my wrap-up video that you'd like to see more in-depth. But one of the books that I read in October was Blacklight by Patrick Melton, Marcus Dunstan, and, and Stephen Romano. And these are the writers from the, Fra the Saw franchise. Um, I was super excited when I saw this book. So much, I mean, I love, love, love the cover. This isn't a reflection. This is, like, actually the book. I love this cover. It kind of looks creepy. And I read... Um, the summary on the back, it says, Imagine this, a coil of steel over two city blocks long, moving faster than anything else on Earth. Even ghosts are afraid of it. But you probably don't know what that means. You have no idea that this roiling column of metal could rip you apart, soul and all, and that you might never come back at least not as skin and bones. You don't know because most people don't believe in ghosts. They think this kind of stuff is just make-believe. Stories you tell kids around a campfire. I guess I don't have to tell you they're wrong. Very wrong. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about me first. This book, um, between that, talking about the ghosts and the ripping apart the soul and all, and the cover, and the writers of the Saw franchise, I figured, wow, this is my book for October. 
And when I started reading it, I was maybe a couple of chapters in, really not even that. I mean, I was a couple of pages in, let's be honest. And I was like, wow, this totally is not what I was expecting. But with all books, I try to give them a fair shot. And I'm like, okay, let's just keep it going. So I read a couple chapters and I was just like, wow, I'm not really getting what's going on but I figured okay no problem maybe you just have to keep going you know some books you have to just kind of power through a little bit before it starts clicking and you understand what's going on so I got about a third a fourth of the way in and I was just thinking to myself like wow I'm still not getting it am I not you know what's going on um and I was talking to my fiance about it and I said you know this isn't really scary at all and he said, no, it's building up, it's building up. So I was like, okay, okay, it's building up. And I got through the middle, and I was like, okay. And then it started dwindling after that. There were so many times reading this book that I just wanted to put it down and not even finish it. But I powered through because... Not only did I purchase this book for myself, but I purchased it for Lainey at Ginger Reads Lainey. And we were both super excited about it. And we both had planned on reading it in October. And I felt horrible. I was just hoping that this book would like turn around so bad. And it never did. Never did. Um, so... To get into my five story elements, the characters, um, the one main character, Buck, is this, I don't even know what you would call him. It wasn't even explained well, um, but he basically could see ghosts or demons or something, and he, he could see marks, and he could pull them out of... It was called the pull, and he could pull them out of people or the space or whatever. And then he would hold them in himself and, I don't know, dispose of them properly. I have no, I can't even explain it. But Buck wasn't really explained very well. I have no idea what the character looked like. And I really don't understand exactly what he did, how he did it, or why he did it. The setting. Um, the setting was pretty nondescript other than the um, speeding, the faster, the fastest train in the whole wide world. That was described really well, but at the same time it was almost, I think they spent too much time on the train and not enough time on any character development. Um, the train was really cool and that was the highest you know, um, story element that got the highest rating. I gave it a three just for the train, but obviously the train was not the star of the show. I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so the setting was pretty, eh. um, the plot, um, I really didn't understand the plot other than his parents died. He was trying to figure out why he had this gift and, yeah, I mean, there wasn't really one. Um, the conflict, I didn't even get it. I mean, I realized that obviously if you're sucking down souls that that sucks, but I don't know. I just couldn't do it. And the resolution outcome. Um, for me, this is how I described it. I said that the beginning was, I don't really remember, let me check. The beginning was confusing, which I've already kind of described. You're just trying to figure out everything. Um, the middle was a huge buildup to nothing because nothing really happened. I mean, well, a whole bunch of craziness did happen, but it wasn't, like, scary or good. And the ending was rushed. Um, the ending was basically like, up oh, the end. And I was like, okay. So there was that. Um, I suggest if you have this book, I would skip it all together. Um, I wouldn't bother. I might keep it on my shelf because it looks pretty, but that's about it. Um, I gave the characters a two. 
and the setting a three just for the fast train, the plot a one, the conflict purpose a two, and the resolution outcome a one. And then I also said I'm probably being too generous with some of those scores. I almost feel bad about how bad this book is. And then, of course, with those scores, you can see it came to almost a two, but it fell between a one and a two, so I gave it a one. Um, that isn't the only book that I've had a low rating of um, this year since I've started doing BookTube, but yeah, it was just one of those books that I just cannot recommend to um, my viewers or to my friends and family. I, um, I Twittered. Uh, Lainey and I was like don't read Blacklight don't waste your time and she's just like oh man are you kidding I was planning on saving that for Halloween weekend don't do it I mean I felt really bad because I was so excited and maybe I should have read the book first and then sent her a book but I just love her and I wish we were friends in real life and I was like Saw franchise we would love that so I bought it and yeah I majorly failed on my first gift for Lainey so sorry Lainey but um, there is my first critical review S. Um, I could do a little bit more in depth but I think you got the picture about how I felt about Blacklight um, if you have any comments questions or concerns leave them in the comments down below and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can follow me on my monthly wrap ups and get more reviews of books that I've read. I hope everybody has a great day and hopefully you've been reading some great books. I've been a little bit struggling to find a good October book but there's that. Um, October is wrapping up. It's the last week and Halloween is on Friday. So I hope all of your costumes are ready for any parties you're going to. And yeah, so have a great day and see you next time. Bye.